习主席复信希腊学者，中西文明互鉴，照亮历史，照见未来。These cultural exchanges will promote understanding and friendship. Aristotle said, "Friend is another self." That's what we hope to achieve with China. 中西两国在相知相亲中深化互信互惠。Despite the differences and the divergences, there is a human core which is the same. So that's what we want to explore. 风云对话专访中西文明互鉴中心指导委员会主席斯泰利奥斯·维尔·维达基斯。近日，国家主席习近平复信雅典大学维尔维达基斯教授等希腊学者，祝贺中西文明互鉴中心成立。习近平指出，中华文明源远流长，古希腊文明影响深远。两千多年前，中西两大文明在亚欧大陆两端交相辉映，为人类文明演进做出了奠基性的重大贡献。现在两国建立中西文明互鉴中心，致力于推动中西文明交流互鉴，促进各国文明发展，具有十分重要的历史和时代意义。习近平主席二零一九年对希腊国事访问期间，同希腊领导人共同倡导文明交流互鉴。访后，双方积极落实两国领导人共识，开始筹建中西文明互鉴中心。经过三年筹备，今年一月。维尔维达基斯教授与西方中心四位教授联合致信习近平主席，畅谈对习主席倡导的文明理念的高度认同，并介绍了中心筹备情况和发展规划。Professor Stelios Vavidakis, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to see you and talk with you. Fairly recently, five Greek scholars, including yourself, wrote a joint letter to our president, President Xi Jinping, in which you expressed in great length your high recognition of the concept of civilization advocated by President Xi. Would you please share with us this letter? What is it about, and what is your motivation in writing this letter? That it was created last year, and we were thinking of ways to get support also from political leaders in both countries. Now, in Greece, we had the support of the Ministry of Education,、uh, the Minister of Education, and the Secretary of Higher Education, and we thought that we would like to also draw attention from China、uh, to our efforts. And we thought that、uh, we knew that your president is interested in cultural. Matters. The embassy had、uh, provided access to some of his、uh, talks about、uh, culture and also about Greece, and so we thought that it would be a good idea to let him know what we are doing, and also、uh, ask for some support,、uh, moral support, but also material support, eventually、uh, for not only for our center, but for also for the parallel center that is being created has just been created. In China,、uh, at Southwest University, with the cooperation of another three Chinese universities. So it's it's、uh, four universities in Greece, four universities in China, two centers, and the president should know about what we were planning to do. And we knew we were hoping that uh, uh, he would get interested in 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 our uh, uh, efforts. Let's say so. That was the idea. Uh, of 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 just preparing a letter addressed to him. Sure, and President Xi had obviously shown, and he had recently replied to your letter, extending congratulatory wording、uh, over the founding of the Center for Chinese and Greek Ancient Civilizations. How did you feel when you received his reply? Obviously, we were、uh, quite happy and honored. Uh, that he、uh, would reply, that he did reply, and、um, uh, we know, you know, we can imagine how busy he must be with all kinds of affairs of state and other matters. And、uh, it was really a nice、uh, confirmation of our hope, if you like, fulfillment of our hope that、uh, we would attract attention、uh, from his part. So that 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 was a very You know, nice feeling, as you can imagine, of being honored by by his response. In President Xi's reply, he mentioned 
The world today is undergoing profound changes unseen in a century. Adding that to resolve the outstanding contradictions and problems facing the world, facing mankind today, it is necessary to rely on material means to overcome difficulties and also rely on the strength of spirit, sincerity, and so on. And in your opinion, Stelios, what role of spiritual strength would play in resolving today's conflicts in the world? Well, here, here I may sound a little idealistic. Uh, you know, I teach philosophy and, and all of us, in fact, in Greece, the, the, the members of the steering committee of our center are philosophers. And as you may know, philosophers really hope that, that spiritual values really uh, play or should play a role and could play a role in uh, also in practical matters. Uh, it's a big question of how to apply philosophy to uh, resolving tensions and, and problems, dealing with problems, uh, social problems, individual problems. So the spirit, obviously, for philosophers plays an important role. Now, maybe, maybe that's too idealistic and maybe we are too optimistic, but for better or for worse, that's what we expect to try to achieve by promoting culture. And culture expresses values, and these values are, you know, the power of the spirit, if you like. Soft power, if you like. Soft power, which uh, hopefully, you know, can be, uh, somehow can attract people's attention and also help them change their lives. Why do you think cultural exchanges would help to resolve conflicts? Well, now, now yes, now we're moving into another matter of, of, of trying to know each other. Of course, at the time of mondialization and the time of, of uh, you know, growth of learning and, and internet technology and so on, I mean, people can study everywhere, can study about uh, everything and about different cultures, but, it, you know, nothing compares to meeting people in person and, and somehow getting close to them, spending time with them, building friendships with them and having these exchanges on their on our identities on on people's cultural identity which is shaped by culture and especially for countries like Greece and China which have very long history and the legacy of, of uh, spiritual achievements and the cultural achievements of all kinds uh, it's very important that we get to know enough uh, of each other and the cultural exchanges promote this effort for mutual understanding. Uh, to take an example, you know, I'm not a sinologist, unfortunately, I don't read Chinese and I, I have read some things in histories, especially in English or French. Uh, but uh, being in China, when I visited China and I spent more time with colleagues in China, I learned more. And so our, our hope is that these cultural exchanges will promote understanding and friendship. And friendship is also very important, as you know. You know, Aristotle said in the Nicomachean Ethics that, that, that a friend is another self. So our friends, our other selves, if you like, they are like mirrors into which we see ourselves. So that's what we hope to achieve with China which has a very long parallel history, like Greece to Greece. 文明交流和互利合作是中西关系的两大纽带。在共建“一带一路”和中国、中东欧国家合作引领下，中西实现了互利共赢、共同发展。双边贸易额从上世纪九十年代初不足一亿美元，跃升至二零二一年的一百二十一点五亿美元。希腊地处海上丝绸之路和陆上丝绸之路的交汇点，是“一带一路”的天然合作伙伴。中原海运、比雷埃夫斯港、中欧陆海快线等已成为响亮的共建“一带一路”标志性项目。What is the significance of all the different uh, cultural exchanges and cooperation between China and Greece? Once more, I would use the expression I used before, that is mutual understanding, in-depth 
in-depth understanding uh, through study, which also has the advantage of bringing people together and, and building friendships. The significance of this is that we hope that this will help multiply that there was a kind of, 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 of effect of, of further development. These people go back to China, let's say Chinese people come here, go back to China, they're like ambassadors of, 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 of Greek uh, uh, culture in China, and Greek professors who go there are like ambassadors of Chinese culture in Greece when they get back. And not only Greece, but also Europe at large, you know, because Greece is the gate of Europe, it's southeast uh, of Europe, and it's it's lit literally I and mean, practically the the gauge. You know, after that, Asia starts. So we hope to bring in. You know, it's the old uh, uh, Silk Road, which of course involves economy as well. There's going to be there's going to be investments. In fact, we are hoping to get sponsors from among among also Chinese investors. Chinese is a much richer country than Greece, and it has a very big economy. I mean, Greece. It's just a, it's very small compared to China. So, you know, the whole of Greece has, has a population smaller than the population of Chongqing. You know? I mean, it's, it's smaller or, or most mega cities in, in, in China. So, so that's, that's the hope. And, and, and the hope is that this will expand in other countries. You know, in the United States, there is already a Chinese-American community and there are uh, specialists, many specialists, of Chinese origin or of American origin. Uh, in Great Britain also there are some, and France. But I don't know of any place which has a, a center, the, the same kind of center that we are trying to build. You, you have chairs, you have programs in universities, American universities, but you don't have such a center that tries to combine. So you are saying all of these different exchanges and cooperation is not only going to uh, improve understanding of the different cultures, but also this may benefit Greece. We hope that this is going to benefit everyone, not just Greeks or Chinese, but the whole world, uh, showing that there are common elements, com there's a common ground, a common humanity, if you like, that has to be uh, highlighted and, and, and become prominent in uh, in thinking and in acting, you know, this has a practical impact. And uh, we think that it's beneficial for everyone. But of course it's going to benefit Greece. People coming to Greece at different levels, even tourism, even to cultural tourism can benefit from it. As you know, before COVID, there were many Chinese people visiting Greece, the islands and so on, and, and now uh, this was interrupted because of COVID, but we hope to renew uh, these, uh, this, uh, not just exchanges, but also trips.中西两国的友好关系离不开中西文明的和和之美，两国分别作为东西方古老文明的代表，历史厚重理念相通。古希腊文明与中华文明都推崇多元融合、人文精神相通，君主张和谐与正义、理性与包容。古希腊诗人
let wisdom of ancient civilizations shine through the future, which was published in the Greek newspaper, The Daily. In that uh, article, President Xi mentioned Great civilizations have much in common to offer to each other, and Greek's golden era produced many of its great philosophers and literary giants. Uh, for example, Nikos Kazantzakis, a giant of modern yes. Greek literature, who had visited China twice before. He once mentioned, uh, which President Xi quoted, Confucius and Socrates were two masks that covered the same face of human logic. What do you think of President Xi's comment? Yeah, I, I, I endorse, I agree with this idea because uh, not only myself, but also philosophers who study these philosophers would say there are common elements. I mean, human reason is universal. And despite the differences and the divergences, a different emphasis, if you like, on certain aspects or different styles of thinking, um, there is a core, a, a core, a human core, which is the same. Uh, for instance, uh, there are ideas about self-knowledge and uh, self-understanding that you find in Socrates and in Confucius. Like with Confucius and Aristotle, uh, there is this idea of the golden mean and something like, uh, uh, you know, the mean between extremes that you also find in, 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 in thinkers in both traditions. So that's what we want to explore. And there are many, many examples. This is just, just one example, very obvious that Kazantzakis and President Xi mentioned. But if you look at Taoism or other Greek philosophers or Chuang Tzu and, and, and Greek thinkers, and, and, and you, you'll find similarities. And we know ancient Greek philosophy is really the foundation of Western civilization. Whereas on the other hand, Confucianism originated in China and has a profound impact on all Eastern civilizations. What do you think is the significance of comparative study of the two countries' philosophies for the mutual learning of the two civilizations? Yeah, I, th I think that it, it can cast light on our own, I mean, uh, if we study Chinese philosophy, we learn more things about about our uh, ideas. As I said, like a mirror in which we see different a, a different way, we find a different way of picturing ourselves. And also the Chinese can do the same. Uh, one of my friends in China, Professor Du Weiming, uh, who uh, is in the Institute for Advanced Studies in Beijing, I think, uh, has written a book on the global, signif global significance of concrete humanity, which is about the influence of Confucianism. I mean, in a way, I have studied this book, and this is how I started to learn about the importance of Confucianism. And, and much later, when I was discussing the ideas of an American philosopher, uh, he said to me, well, look, these ideas you can find in a, Confu I mean, you can interpret in Confucian light. And I think he was right. So that, that shows how we can learn and benefit from uh, learning from the other. What lines of thoughts or what principles uh, exist in the civilization of China and Greece that you think can today provide guidance for making the world mm -hmm. a more peaceful and a better place? Mm -hmm. um, I can think of one example uh, which Confucius said a leader who strives for harmony, but not for conformity. But a petty person would strive for conformity, but not harmony. Mm -hmm. Well, harmony is a good, good uh, concept to start with, to begin with. Uh, but it, of course, it must be interpreted because uh, as you, you quoted this, uh, uh, the, the, the saying that that uh, it shouldn't be just conformity, but it should be a deeper kind of balancing and a deeper kind of integration, which you don't find only at the social level. And I wouldn't limit it to Confucianism. I would go to Taoism, and I would say that there is a kind of ecological significance. And Greece, China, particularly, has suffered from pollution and so on. So I think we have to learn a lot about harmonizing human activities with nature and with the natural world. Of course, this can be uh, transferred to the social environment, and we can talk about social harmony. 
Of course, this shouldn't uh, be just conformity, as, as you, you, you said, correctly said. And I think on the other hand, if you look at Greek concepts coming from Greece, I mean, there is a certain, there's a certain notion of freedom and autonomy that you find in, in, in ancient Greek uh, uh, cities and, and in, in first democracies in Athens, for instance, uh, which emphasize more uh, individualism. I mean, there's a more anthropocentric and uh, maybe sometimes we feel it's a little too individualistic attitude that you find in Greek in the Greek tradition. Uh, individuality is more, let's say, emphasized. Uh, and, and, and then I think that we can learn, I mean, Greeks can learn from uh, this social framework of harmony and natural harmony, as I said, from China and other things like uh, importance of uh, respecting certain relations, you know, parents and children, and also uh, uh, the importance of ritual. I find quite interesting that we neglect ritual, but there is some significance to in ritual, as you can learn from the Confucian uh, thinkers. Uh, but there are uh, other things that the Chinese can get from Greece. I mean, like this idea of, of, of individuality and the importance of uh, 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 initiative of, 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 of certain um, uh, Greeks, uh, Greek thinkers. And when it comes to reasoning, I mean, Greeks particularly developed uh, technic techniques of logic uh, and, and their style of writing was more, let's say, strictly argumentative, while in Chinese writings there is more metaphor, more allusion, more uh, 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 allegories and so on and so we can also learn from that uh, there is a very important poetic tradition in, in china which which uh, we, we can appreciate but it, 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 in greece it's the center is, is human beings if you look at this look at the statues or look at look at the art more generally if you look at greek sculpture you'll find this emphasis on the human body the individual body with its beauty and its strength. But if you look at Chinese, let's say, painting, you can find harmonization with the natural environment and not so much emphasis on uh, uh, the individual person, but just uh, the whole uh, uh, synthesis of landscape and, and social surroundings. So that's, that's, that's two different styles and ways that can be studied in parallel. Uh, with a view to uh, un better understanding and, and um, uh, getting from the other, just, just uh, absorbing elements from the other tradition. Where Wei Da Ji Si Jiao Shou is a university professor and 2006年,法國政府授予他一級教育歧視. Professor, when you visited China previously, uh, before COVID times, which part of China most impressed you? It's very difficult to tell. There are so many things I like, different things in different places. As far as, as archaeological sites are concerned, I mean, Xi'an uh, and, and, and also uh, the museum in 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 uh, Chongqing and also the uh, site you know on the mountain near Chongqing I forget the name where a famous uh, uh, battle was fought with the Mongols I mean are some of the places that I particularly liked uh, I'm not speaking of just touristic attractions but also the archaeological interest the museums are fascinating in China starting from prehistory and going to history uh, but then if you talk about cities you know, there are, you know, the city walls of Nanjing, I like, which is a very important historical uh, city. Uh, and of course, if you go to Shanghai, I mean, Shanghai is a cosmopolitan city, which is beautiful to, to live in. I mean, it's, it's, it's very interesting as its social life and its uh, the activities there. And, and of course, I suspect Beijing, I have been many times in Beijing, but I was in a narrow, let's say, circle of, uh, of colleagues uh, for the World Congress of Philosophy and so on. So I haven't seen that much of Beijing, but uh, uh, 
apart from the you know the obvious places the tourist uh, places palaces and so on and the forbidden city but um, uh, I, I I'm feeling there is very much to explore yet so if you ask me to choose I cannot choose because it's so difficult so we welcome you uh, once again to visit China later on this year and thank you so much for joining me today it's great to have you with us Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Best wishes to you and to the Chinese, my Chinese friends and the Chinese people in general, hoping that we'll have more exchanges.